Hey guys, the Parallel 4 Link build starts today. And the first step is creating a cross member that will hold the upper link bars. That's happening right now. Hey Garage Fabbers. If you're just joining Garage Fab, I'm Man Candy, owner of Man Candy's Creations, and we're currently working on my wife's 1987 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. We bought this truck several years ago, already bagged, and it had a triangulated four link installed. My favorite suspension is the parallel four link, and so I'm converting that triangulated four link to my parallel four link with a Watts link. Until today, on every truck I have ever built, I installed what I call a shopping cart handle. It's a heavy duty cross member that takes on all the pushing and pulling forces under heavy acceleration and super hard braking. The original builder of this truck didn't use a cross member. Instead, they installed lower link bar mounts that hug the inside of the frame rails and attach the upper link bars directly to the top of the bed mounts. Needless to say, the front bed mounts weren't ever designed to hold control arms. So when the triangulated control arms were attached to the front bed mounts, they were not only holding the front and rear forces, but also stabilizing the axle left and right. So these front bed mounts were under a lot of stress. Terrible idea, right? Well, I've driven this truck for several years and the bed mounts show no signs of failure. No one wanted bending, cracking, nothing. So I'm going to copy this terrible idea. I am going to make a few improvements though. Hold that thought. Another thing the original builder did was remove cross members. That's often necessary to get a truck frame to lay flat on the pavement, so I don't have a problem with that. My problem is they didn't put any of them back. I'm not a structural engineer, but I think if Mitsubishi decided that cross members were necessary, maybe they're necessary. My rule of thumb is if you take out a support, put it back. The factory Mighty Max came with several cross members. Behind the cab alone, there was one at the front bed mounts, one near the axle, and a huge one above the spare tire. The original builder removed all those and then welded in a small bar at the very back, and this entire area was open and unsupported. When I bought this truck, I immediately welded in this bar across the notches. This is one of the most important cross members, especially on bag trucks. Bag brackets are generally welded to the side of the frame, and after a while, the upward force of the spring will eventually cause the frame to twist. Welding a bar across the tops of the notches will prevent that. So now there's only one cross member missing by the front bed mounts. I'm going to bridge the two mounts directly behind the cab and since the previous builder proved those mounts are strong enough to support a triangulated four link, the cross member I'm adding is going to hold the upper bars of my parallel four link. Basically, I just need to stretch the cross member across the top of the two front bed mounts, but if I do that, it's going to get in the way of the trans tunnel, which clearly needed to be clearanced out. They did a terrible job. It looks awful but luckily you can't see it with the bed on, the truck's painted, I'm not gonna deal with it. But I do need to worry about the drive shaft clearance. So when I create this cross member, it's going to need to have a notch in it for the drive shaft clearance. I usually use two by four quarter wall tubing for the shopping cart handle. But since this cross member is only going to hold the top link bars, I'm going to use two inch square tubing with 3 16 wall. The notch that I'm gonna put in this cross member literally does not get simpler. If you cut tubing twice at alternating 45 degree angles, you can relocate the centerpiece up, weld it together, cap the ends of the tube, and the cross member is done. I've got the center of the cross member already cut out. I just need to figure out how long to make the two sides. To make sure the notch is in the middle of the cross member, I need to find the center of the cross member's total width. I've got a cheat code for easily finding that center. GarageFab now has viewers outside of the US like India, the Philippines, and Australia. That is so cool. Those people may or may not know that most of us in the US use the imperial measurement system, as in fractions of inches and feet. It's a ridiculous measurement system that's really difficult to learn, but on the bright side, it's really easy to make mistakes. So to my fellow fabricators that haven't yet converted to the metric system, here's an easy way of finding the center of any measurement without math. 
Just fold a tape measure, line up the end to your measurement, and your answer will be dead center on the other end. My cross member will be 38 and a half inches total. So the center of my cross member will be 19 and a quarter inches. Have fun with it and let me know in the comments if you find that useful. So to start, I need to find the center of my middle piece, which is 11 inches wide. That one's pretty easy. I can do that one in my head, which is five and a half inches. I'm gonna draw a line to mark the center. And this is gonna be the absolute center of the cross member. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in one of the pieces that I've already cut at a 45 degree angle. I just haven't made it the right length yet. So the plan for this cross member is to create an illusion where the pipe comes in horizontal, curves up at a 45, and then back to horizontal again. And I'm going to do that by welding in this seam and adding some plates onto the side. And the key to making the illusion work is that the width right here needs to match the width of the pipe, which is two inches. Since I'm adding quarter inch plates on either side, I'm adding a half inch material. So the distance from here to here needs to be an inch and a half. Once this distance is set in an inch and a half, I'm going to draw a line across both pieces to help me line up these pieces again in the future without having to measure. Now, once I add the two quarter inch plates onto the sides, the total distance is two inches, which matches the pipe. With the pipes in place, I can use the center mark on the middle piece to find how long this outer piece needs to be. The total width of the cross member is 38 and a half. So the center mark from 38 and a half needs to be at 19 and a quarter. So from that center mark, I'll mark 19 and a quarter. So one side's figured out, I'm gonna do the other side exactly the same way, tack it together and make sure that it's the right width. good and take it back out, weld it all up, make it pretty, and then weld it in permanently. The caps I'm welding onto the ends of the tube are almost a quarter inch smaller than the tube that I'm welding them to. That creates a valley on the corner that I'm going to fill with weld and we'll have a round top, hopefully saving a lot of time when it comes to grinding this down and sculpting this corner to match the corner on the tube. I think I can double the strength of the front bed mounts by joining them with a piece of square tubing. Cutting out cardstock templates first takes the math and measuring out of creating metal parts.
Maybe you noticed I only tacked the cross member in. I've decided to save the welding until the entire link bar setup is mocked up and in place in case I need to change anything. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to create multiple identical metal parts without a CNC table. When we make link bar tabs for our cross member, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. It's right there. It's, it's right there. Hey, let me know what you thought of this condensed format. I'm going to be experimenting with more bite-sized videos in an attempt to get more content out more often. I would really appreciate your input. Until the next one, my friends, keep moving forward.